I know a lot of people on Facebook said we must please not have a 21-day countdown. So, you know, I, I so love a countdown. And I, I, I thought, you, you know those Christmas calendars, those nice ones that you get in, um, with chocolates in it. And every day you open one up and there's a nice chocolate. And, you know, so I had a bit of time on my hands today. And we don't quite have chocolates and we don't have those type of calendars here, and I'm not that creative, but I was a bit creative, so I decided we're going to have a 21-day countdown, so I'm going to encourage you to do the same, and seeing that toilet paper is a huge commodity, and toilet paper has become like super precious in this 21 days, so I decided we're going to do a 21-day TP countdown, so you can see we have a way to go, so it's going to be fun. We're going to spend a lot of time on the Word and a lot of time with Jesus in this time. So, yeah, every night I'm going to gladly take off one block of our TP countdown. So, whoops, one day is gone, guys. We made it on day one of quarantine, and everyone is still okay. So, yeah. You can join me with our TP countdown. I'm so sorry. I had to make a little joke because in times like these, we have to hold on to laughter and to joy. I do believe that it's really one of the most beautiful things of our nation, South Africa, is that we laugh together and we pray together. So let's just continue to do this in this time, to laugh together and to pray together. And, you know, let's choose joy. I know there's a lot of things going on, and I, lo I know there's a lot of – you probably – hear a lot of news from all different kinds of places, but let's choose joy. Let's choose to look at Jesus. You know, there's no one like our God, and there's no one that's as strong as he is, and there's no one that can compare to him, and nothing is literally impossible with God. So let's choose joy. Let's choose, as a nation of South Africa, let's choose to love together and to pray together. I think it's, I think it's such a beautiful thing of our country, and it doesn't mean that we don't have empathy with what's going on. We just choose joy. We choose to trust in God. We choose to look away from, from all the distractions, and we choose to look at him. We choose to look away from fear, and we choose to look at his goodness and at his mercy and at his grace. So let's choose joy. You know, um, Nehemia, is it now? Nehemia 8 verse 10 says, For the joy of the Lord is our strength and stronghold. And I love that. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and a stronghold is a hiding place. So the joy of the Lord is, is our strength, and it's our hiding place. It's where we hide ourselves. It's, it's a place where nothing can get to us. So um, joy is so powerful. So let's choose joy. You know, when you can have joy in God when you know that there's no other God like him. He is the one true God, and nothing compares to him. No one is stronger than he is. Um, there's nothing that he can't do. He really redeemed us from the curse of the law. He redeemed us from sickness. He redeemed us from death. He saved us from the enemy. So he did all that for us on the cross. So we have this, this great rock, this strong rock and the salvation to hold on to, which is Jesus Christ. You know, so in Isaiah 53 Verse 5, it says, by his wounds we are healed and made whole. So he really paid for us on the cross so that we can be well, that we can be healed. So, uh, yeah, that gives us joy to know that he's accomplished it for us. He made a covenant saying that he will take care of us. He will bless us. He will hold on to us. And, and that is so amazing. You know, when you submit yourself to God, it means that you place yourself under his submission, under his protection. You say, Lord, I believe in you. And when, when you do that, you place yourself under, under his submission. You surrender to him. That means you are now his responsibility. You are under his protection. And that is such a safe and a wonderful place. I mean, just think about the people around you. Um, if, if I'm in trouble, I want a strong person to be with me. I want someone that I know can handle the situation. And if you at this stage know that God himself, the creator of heaven and earth, he is with you 
where you are now, at this moment. He's holding your hand and he's saying, just look at me. Don't worry, just look at me. You know, when, when there was a storm and Jesus came walking on the ocean, on the storm, and he said to Peter, Peter, come to me. Um, there was a storm raging. It wasn't calm seas. I mean, it's already impossible to walk on a sea. It's already impossible to walk on water. But now Jesus says to Peter, Peter, come walk on this water. Come walk on this storm. Come to me. And, you know, he said to him, look at me. Don't look away. Um, so even when storms are raging all around us, all we have to do is to look at Jesus. And then we literally walk in the impossible. Where other people um, say this is impossible, God says nothing is impossible. So let's, let's look away from the storms. Let's look away from all the, the news that we're hearing. Let's pray and stand together. Let's choose joy and let's choose to look at Jesus and not at our circumstances. Let's, let's just give God more attention than we give to anything else, to any distraction, anything that that tries to bring fear to our hearts, fear is not the solution. Faith is. By fearing and by worrying, we're not going to add anything to our life. But by having faith, we can literally move mountains. So let's go for faith. Let's go for moving mountains with God. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just an important time for us to look at Jesus, not to look at the storms. So, yo, let's choose joy. You know, I was driving. I had to drive down because flights were canceled. And um, when I was driving here, I, I spoke to God and I prayed. And, you know, I was, of course, I'm, I'm human. I was a bit anxious. And, um, you know, you, you, you've never, we've never had something like this before. We've never been quarantined. We've never been in lockdown. The whole world has never been in lockdown. And, and of course, it, sometimes a thought comes. And so I was driving and a thought came. And there was a truck in front of me. And there was a sticker on the truck that said, we walk by faith and not by sight. I mean, how beautiful is that? God speaks to us through bumper stickers and <laughs> through our circumstances, wherever we are. And I mean, I saw that so clearly, this sticker, just saying to God, Lord, it's I'm a bit worried, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit alarming. And um, how amazing is God and how gracious is he with, with that sign just in front of me. We walk by faith and not by sight. So we walk by faith in him, not looking at the things around us, not looking at our distractions. Um, so I want to encourage you to walk by faith and not by sight. Don't look at the realities around you. Don't look at the news. Don't look at... I'm not saying uh, be be misinformed. I'm just saying give more attention to the Word of God in this time for your for your behalf, because um, He sends forth His Word and heals them and rescues them from the pit and destruction, like Psalm 107 verse 20 says. So let's look at what God is saying. Um, I want us to to just look at some scriptures. Um, yeah, so let's do it. Let's go to Mark 9. One day we made it. So Mark 9. All right. Mark 9, verse 30, 23, sorry. Um, verse 20. So they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, at once it completely convulsed the boy. And he fell to the ground and kept rolling about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, how long has he had this? And he answered, from the time he was a little boy. So this is the story about the little boy that was possessed by demons, and the father brought this boy to Jesus. And um, yeah, this, this is what this is about. Um, verse 22, and it, is, and it has often thrown him both into fire and into water, intending to kill him. But if you can do anything, do have pity on us and help us. 
So, you know, this father is concerned. His boy has been suffering, you know, even from from when he was, have I seen it right, from when he was born. And um, the, these demons have really um, tortured his son. And, and this father is concerned and he says to Jesus, if you can do anything, please help him. Have pity on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can do anything, why all things are possible to him who believes. At once the father of the boy gave an eager cry with tears and he said, Lord, I believe, help my weakness of faith. You know, this, it really just touched my heart and I was thinking of it today. Um, after this, you can go on reading, Jesus healed the boy. You know, but that father was just, he was just truthful. He was just real with, with, with Jesus. And he said, Lord, I have faith, but help my weakness of faith. You know, and I think it's, it's, um, it's, it's so important for us to realize that we don't have to try and be strong. Um, I always love to boast in my weakness because I know that I'm not a strong person. But I know my father is so strong. So I never go to the Father trying to be strong, trying to be brave. I go to the Father and I fall on my knees and I say, Lord, I need you. I, I can't save myself. Help me. I'm scared. You know, and, and sometimes we think that having faith means trying to be strong or trying to have faith. You don't, you don't have to try to have faith or to try to be strong. All you need to do is to run to Jesus. And said, Lord, I believe, but help me in my weakness. Help me in my weakness of faith. Help me when those, when those anxieties come and the storm is raging around me and, and I just feel weak. Just help me to see you. So we, we can live in truth. And I do believe that God loves it when we are truthful with him. He knows everything. You know, and there's nothing that we can hide from him. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our thoughts. He, he even knows how many hairs are on your head. So he knows when you're scared. And you know, I just believe that to just live in truth in your relationship and just be honest is, is so precious. So here this man comes and he says, Lord, I believe. Jesus says to him, if you believe in me, anything is possible. And this man says, Lord, I believe, but help my weakness of faith. Now, so in this time... I want to encourage you, don't try to, to, to be strong. Don't try to have faith. Just run to Jesus. And that's faith. <laughs> that's real faith. Sometimes we think faith is something that we conjure up in our minds. But faith is a hard thing that also moves up into our thoughts. Our thoughts are renewed by the word. And so faith comes to all areas in our life. But, you know, faith is just going to God. Jesus said, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will cause you to rest. And that's faith, is to go to him. So don't try and have faith. Just go to him. That's faith. And say, be truthful. Have a relationship with him. I, I love that we can have a relationship with God, with, with the Most High God, with the Creator of heaven and earth. He calls us his children. Um, he is our Father. You know, so... You can just run to him and be real with him and say, Lord, help me. Help me. And, and when you get scared or when fear tries and comes and knocks on your door, just run to God. Don't give fear the attention. Don't give the news or the anxiety the attention. Just turn away. Turn your back on it and run to God. Run to your father and say, Daddy, Lord, I need you. Help me. And spend time and just sit in the word. I think it's so beautiful that we have this this time of isolation, um, that we can really just sit at the feet of Jesus and give him our full attention. I mean, life is such a rat race sometimes. And, you know, if there's really not that many things that we have to do now. You have to feed your kids and you have to, some other time, please take a bath and, you know, do small things. You don't, you actually are forced to sit at home. What a better time to just sit at the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, just speak to me. You know, my, I have a very childlike faith. I, I love to just go to God in a childlike way and say, Father, Daddy, <laughs> just speak to me. There's nothing like hearing your voice. There's nothing like 
looking into your eyes and sitting at your feet and just talk to me. And, you know, whatever then happens, whether you get a thought of just read Psalm 91 or whether you just decide I'm going to read Psalm 91, just enjoy it. That's the big thing. Have joy in your relationship with him. Find joy in that. And, you know, then the distractions become very still and quiet. Then, then suddenly everything becomes still and all that matters is the voice of God. So let's just use this time to look at him and to hear his voice. Um, he knows. He is such a compassionate God. He knows what we struggle with. He knows our fears. He, he knows what we went through. Even when, when he went to the cross and he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, if it's possible, take away this cup of suffering from me. He, he was scared. He knew what was coming. He didn't try and, and, and lie to God and said, Lord, I've got this. I'm not scared. He was, when he was scared, he said, Father, I, I need you. Just help me. Um, so, yeah, let's just, let's just find joy. Let's, God is our, he is our strength and he is our stronghold. He is our hiding place. He loves it when we come and hide with him. He's our dwelling place. He's our, he's our secret place. He's the place where we find refuge. He's our strength and our rock. And so we run to him and say, Lord, I'm hiding here with you until this storm passes. I'm, I'm, I'm covering myself in your arms and I'm just sitting at your feet looking at you. So oh, let's just go to, um, to John 20. I just uh, I found the scripture the other day and it really, really blessed me. But I want us to read it in the Passion Translation. Now, I love reading the Amplified Bible or the Passion Translation. I don't um, have a lot of translations that I read. I love the King James and Amplified and the Passion. But what's so lovely about the Passion, it's, it's derived from the Aramaic, which was the language which Jesus spoke. And it's a very passionate language. So it's very descriptive. So I love that. So let's go to John 20. John 20, <clears throat> verse, let's read from verse 11. It's just um, after Jesus was buried, um, after, the, after he was crucified. Um, verse, John 20, verse 13. Dear woman, why are you crying? Oh, sorry guys. We have to go to verse 11. Mary arrived back at the tomb, broken and sobbing. She stooped to peer inside, and through her tears, she saw two angels in dazzling white robes. Isn't that incredible? Sitting where Jesus' body had been laid, one at the head and one at the feet. Now listen, this is already amazing. Two angels. Dear woman, why are you crying? They asked. Mary answered, they have taken away my Lord. Now, I love this about Mary. Here she comes to the tomb, and there's two angels. But the two angels that she sees doesn't stop her tears. Her heart longs after Jesus. She wants him. He's just been crucified. He just died um, on the cross. And now she comes to a tomb. Here's two angels sitting, but not even they are able to encourage her. She wants Jesus. Now, that's beautiful. Um, Mary answered, they've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've laid him. She's looking for him. Then she turned around to leave, and there was Jesus standing in front of her. But she didn't realize that it was him. He said to her, Dear woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? You know, this touches my heart so much. It's, it's, I can see that desperation. There's nothing that is able to fill me. There's nothing that is able to, um, 
to comfort me other than my Lord Jesus. There's nothing that is able to, to, to encourage me like he does. She's looking for him and only for him. Nothing else will do. Mary answered, thinking he was only the gardener. Sir, if you have taken his body somewhere else, tell me, and I will go and... Mary, Jesus interrupted her. Turning to face him, she said, Rabboni. Jesus cautioned her, Mary, don't hold on to me now, for I haven't yet ascended to God my Father. And he's not only my Father and God, but now he's your Father and your God. Isn't that beautiful? So Jesus speaks to her and says, Mary, now you don't just call God, God. You call him Father. He's not just the God of the nations anymore. He is called your Father, like he is called my Father. So we have the same Father now. Now go to my brothers. How beautiful is that? Just after Jesus is raised from the dead, after the crucifixion, he says, we are now his brothers and sisters, and we have one Father, the same Father that he has. We call God Father and tell them what I've told you, that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. You know, so this just, it really, really just blessed me is to think that Jesus' Father is my Father. You know, and if we look at the Word, we saw how the Father loved Jesus. The Father really took care of Jesus, and he was with him all the way. Jesus did miracles, and it was all because of the Father and because of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, and now we know that the Father, he dearly loved him and took care of him. He even um, had the power to raise him from the dead. So by the Spirit of God, Jesus was raised by the dead. And, you know, that same God is my Father and is your Father. So, we really don't have to fear a thing because, you know, when I was small, I remember, you know, if, if there was anything that scared me. When my dad came into the, into the room, he was the strongest guy I knew. Uh, nothing. He could do anything. I didn't think. I wasn't scared at all when he was there. I remember when I, when I was small and he would hold me in his arms. Um, it could be cold. It could be winter. But when my dad held me, it was a warm and a safe place. And I remember thinking how big my hands were when I was small. You know, and, and that's the same place that we have in God. He's our father. He's our refuge. He's our, he's our safe place. And he holds us in our arms. He is our father. He's not only our God, but he is our father. And he will not let us perish. He loves us so much. So um, let's just read Psalm 18. I'm finishing up with this. Our messages are going to be between 20 and 30 minutes with the um, on our lockdown series. So, yeah, let's go to our last scripture for the evening, Psalm 18. I'm also reading it from the Passion Translation. I love this scripture. Okay, Psalm 18, verse 1. I love you, Lord. Lord, I passionately love you, and I'm bonded to you. I want to embrace you, for now you've become my power. You are as real to me as a bedrock beneath my feet, like a castle on a cliff, my forever firm fortress, my mountain of hiding, my pathway of escape, my tower of rescue, rescue where none can reach me my secret strength and shield around me. You are salvation's ray of brightness, shining on the hillside, always the champion of my cause. All I need to do is to call to you, singing to you the praiseworthy God. When I do, I'm safe and sound in you. For when the ropes of death wrapped around me and terrifying torrents of destruction overwhelmed me, taking me to death's door, to doom's domain, I cry to you in my distress, the delivering God, and from your temple throne you heard my troubled cry. My sobs came right into your heart. 
and you turned your face to rescue me. The earth itself shivered and shook. It reeled and rocked before him. As the mountains trembled, they melted away, for his anger was kindled, burning on my behalf. Now, you have to see this. You know, this is David calling to God and saying, Lord, I'm in distress. The, the, um, the cords are deaf of surrounding me. He's saying, Lord, I'm in trouble. And then the word says, that cry came right into the ears of God, right into his heart. And he was so angry that something came against his child, that he, um, that the earth started shaking and shivering. Verse 8, fierce flames, fl fierce flames leaped from his mouth, erupting with blazing, burning coals as smoke and fire encircled him. He stretched heaven's curtain open and came to my defense. So this is so beautiful. So David cries to God, and God is so angry that something is standing up against David. God is so angry that something is, there's, David has an enemy. Something is coming against him. Something is, is troubling him. That he says he opens heaven's curtains and he comes down. So he descends down from heaven to earth to come and solve this problem, to come and sort this enemy out. So swiftly he rode to earth as the stormy sky was lowered. He rode a chariot of thunder clouds amidst thick darkness, a cherub he steed and as he swooped down, soaring under the winds of spirit wind, wrapped and hidden in thick cloud darkness. His thunder tabernacle surrounded him. He hid himself in mystery darkness. The dense rain clouds were his garments. Suddenly the brilliance of his presence broke through with lightning bolts and with a mighty storm from heaven, like a tempest dropping coals of fire. The Lord thundered. The great God above every God spoke with his thunder voice from the skies. What fearsome hailstones and flashes of fire were before him. He released his lightning arrows and ro rooted my foes. See how they ran and scattered in fear. Then with his mighty roar, he laid bare the foundations of the earth, uncovering the secret source of the sea. The hidden depths of the land and sea were exposed by the hurricane blast of his hot breath. He then reached down from heaven all the way from the sky to the sea, he reached down into my darkness to rescue me. He took me out of my calamity and chaos and drew me to himself, taking me from the depths of my despair. Even though I was helpless in the hands of my hateful, strong enemy, you were good to deliver me. When I was at my weakest, my enemies attacked but the Lord held on to me. His love broke open the way. And he brought me into a beautiful broad place. He rescued me because his delight is in me. How beautiful is that? God came and opened the heaven. He, he exposed the the, even the sea, he breathed, and even the seas departed when they heard God was there. And lightning and flashes came because he was angry that something stood up against David, against his child. And he rescued him. He, he took his hand and drew him from those many dark waters that, that surrounded him. That's how God feels about you. He hears your cry, and he comes down from heaven, and he says, listen. Who is standing up against my child? I'm going to sort that thing out. I'm going to sort out whatever enemy is against you. If there's someone you want to fight for you, it's God. So just imagine, even when the sea, even when the sea felt the breath of God, it departed. That is how, that's how powerful God is. So is there really anything that can stand against him? Is there really anything that can compare to him? You know, I remember a few years ago, I, I asked God, I said, Lord, what is, it, what is the fear of the Lord? What does that mean? Because the more I know you, 
the, the more I'm drawn to you, the more I experience your love and your goodness. And God showed me this picture. He showed me a fighting rink, you know, a, a boxing rink. Um, and he showed me, he said, if I was in that boxing rink and sickness came in, who would you think would win? And I said, Lord, you would win, of course. And he said, okay, put me in that boxing rink again. If death came in, who would you think would win? I said, Lord, you, you would win. And he said, okay, put me in that rink again. If I'm there and the devil comes in, who do you think will win? Who should be feared? And I said, Lord, you, you are the one who should be feared. And then it dawned on me, there is nothing that can compare to God. And that's why he is, that's why we walk in the fear of God is because of how amazing and how powerful and how great he is. There's nothing that can compare to him. There's nothing that can compare to his majesty and his glory and his goodness and his strength. Anyone will fear when they come against him because he's going to win. And I want to encourage you tonight with that word that God is winning. He has. Jesus descended down from heaven and he died on a cross to deal with our sickness, to deal with our sin, to deal with death, to deal with the enemy, it is finished. That's what Jesus said on the cross. He said, it is done. So we have this wonderful joy and this wonderful encouragement that we have victory. It, we don't have to, to look for victory. It's not in front of us. We have it. It's inside of us. We have God's abiding glory in us. He's with us. And there's nothing that can stand against our God. So um, be encouraged. Um, bless you guys. We'll see you tomorrow morning. We're going to be live again at 1030. Um, please remember to go to Christ Life Ministries as well. They are, um, Harit is doing a morning devotional at 9 o'clock. Please tune in and bless you guys. Mm -hmm.